to your astrological natal chart report. This is the Peace Dealer, and I hope you gain the utmost of quality from this report. I'm not even going to just sugarcoat. I'm just going to get straight to this. Oh, my fucking God. Your chart is fucking lit. Excuse my language. I'm so sorry. Oh, my bejesus. Your chart is amazing. It's extraordinary. Um, There are certain things that I'll see in a natal chart that make my astro nerd go crazy. One is high level degrees. You have 27 degree MC on the North Node. That is a huge deal. Another thing is alien constructs. I have a 29 degree Mercury. Mercury is brain processing capability and functionality. My youngest sister has a 29 degree Mercury in Gemini. Let me give you an idea of what it means to have a 29 degree Mercury in Gemini. You are a mastermind. You have a mastermind. You have the most powerful mind in the most powerful sign. And then you're an Aquarius, so you're a whole genius, bro. You're you're a supernatural alien god. And I'm not saying that as a compliment. This is just a fact. You carry the vibration of pure knowledge. You're the pure celestial king. Okay, all aquas, rising suns, moons are are high nobility. They're high kings and queens. But your title is master. You're the critic. Okay, you're the Virgo rising, the master of analysis. And now this subsets your Aquarius energy to creatively have you innovate your lifestyle and the lifestyles of others. You pimp people's lifestyles out with your advanced lifestyle mechanics and the knowledge that goes into creating how talented you are. Okay, your legacy with MC and Gemini is to be heard. It's your destiny. What you and I have in common is that we have our North Node next to our MC. It's just, oh, see, we're destined to connect. So shout out to Amanda. You were born in 2002, right? You have your MC and North Node in Gemini. I have my MC and North Node in Aquarius. So we're connected like that. I just wanted to mention that. It's really dope. We both have 29 degree Mercury's. And then my rising is 27 degrees Taurus. And you have 27 degrees rising. So, you know, there's just certain things that are aligned. This is why we were, I was destined to read your chart through Amanda. Shout out to Amanda once again. So, What's really cool about that is you're destined to be famous. Fame is more Aquarian, but North Node is you're destined to be heard. Your words have to be put out there. You might trigger the crap out of people, but good. But this is really important because the challenge for you is to, as a broadcasting means, put your information out there. You're going to change the world. Everyone with MC and immutable sign is going to change the world. You are going to change it individually with your ideas. And Saturn here means that the totality of integrity around your ideas makes your word a law unto itself. People with uh, Saturn in Gemini, whether in 72 or 2002, which were the last times this was here, everything, it's 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 an element of vociferate. So everything you say warps reality because the integrity you have over your word makes it so. This is why you can't stand liars because it messes with your karma. You have the individual karmic authority to mean everything you say extremely with Pluto because that's your magic. And now, unlike others that have this as an Aquarius with Neptune and Aquarius, are you serious? Oh, my gosh. You sustain this celestial cosmic higher knowledge of what the fuck you're saying. So you actually know what you're saying. This is so very important because now the advanced lifestyle you create will align towards this job title that will secure you self-employment. Because you're not really meant to work for anyone else. So what that's going to happen is if you work for anyone else, you will never keep the job. Can you keep the job? If you want to, you just won't. You'll probably quit or you'll or you'll get fired. Once you expose the truth of the upper management, it's time for you to go. Same with your neighborhood, too. So if you find that you can't keep a job or you don't, it's not that you can't. You're not meant to. You're not even meant to work for people. So the North Node that has returned 2020 and Mars is getting ready to move forward with over the next year is going to step you into the actualization of your destiny before you even return your Saturn return like 2030. So the road is set for you. Saturn finished through your six. Your chart is legit, bro. I'm going to give you an alien construct article because you're one of us. You're an alien. But the reason why I like your Tyler Harrow has this too. And he's a basketball god. The thing here, and I'm not even a fan of him. I don't watch him. I don't do that. But I just, I just know, like, just look at him play basketball. Like he's, He's not, he's, he's celestial. Okay. I just had to have to say that, uh, as, as, uh, example. I think XXX Tentacion was a part of that too. He kind of might have had that. So you're in that, bro. You, you have Uranus power, which is cool, but in the sign of Aquarius, which it rules, you're one of the foremost geniuses ever. Like you as an ascended master are here to lead humanity. 
whether you want to or not. You can channel higher frequency beings. The reason why I have to say it like this is out of all the alien constructs, because I have alien constructs too in Capricorn. They're the most powerful. The only thing that's beyond that is Aqua and Pisces constructs. So I can say confidently, you're a leader of the new school. Like you're here to guide humanity. And that's how you have to see it. You have to get rid of any insecurity you might have coming up into here because that's just what you're here to do. Be. My, my, once again, with Mercury, I'm one of the best communicators I know. I have one of the most powerful minds in existence. And I it just is what it is. The reason why I'm as successful as I am is because I can communicate this so well. 29 degree Mercury. My youngest sister, okay, born 94, has Mercury in Gemini, 29 degrees. This is its rulership. She graduated college at the top of her class with 4-0 in honors. It's just genius. It's intelligent. The ability for you to process information is at its mastery. So 29 degree planets, if, if it was Venus, which you have 21 degrees, you're proficient when it comes to your detached knowledge. You're impartial. And I'm going to talk about that a bit more. But 29 degrees means you have one of the most powerful brain processing functions, retrograde or not ever. Retrograde just means you, especially behind your sun, you second guess yourself a lot. You really go back over your thoughts and think over what more you would say than someone who's direct that just says it. Okay. 12th house to your sun, which I have a Gemini sun, Mercury and Taurus. You can have Mercury after your sun, which means your words spill out of you. You keep your thoughts private. A lot of your thoughts are function physiologically. So it moves our body language. We discern body language and it transcends the organizational function of how you can take thoughts, organize them and actually direct them. This sets up telekinesis, which is an extremely rare ability that less than 1% of the world can probably do. And you're one of that 1%. Not even because of that, but because of the Aquarius. Now, Aquarius is difficult to speak of because it is sci-fi. Science fiction is Aquarius, but Aquarius is science. So a lot of what is seen as science fiction is actually science. Aquarius as an energy will tell you everything in this world, magic, supernatural abilities, they can all be explained by science because it's the truth. It's the knowledge you represent. So Uranus and Neptune here, which I'm going to show you the Neptune alien construct, which you can literally ascend, perform hypnosis, talk to the dead, access the astral plane. This is generational. Every single one of you within this 2000s generation has this, but you're like the hub of it. So you're going to be one of the people, if you think of a broadband connector, people will connect to your spirit like a radio station. And this is going to create this sense of telepathy that you'll experience and generate and charge. Your intuition with Neptune here is futuristic. I have Neptune in Capricorn. Earth, it's real time in an Earth dimension. So if someone isn't shit, they're going to pick their nose. And the way they kind of do something unconsciously, I'm going to gain elements from their own body movement to give me elements of their character. There's nothing normal about this. It's psychic. It, anything after Saturn is supernatural. You are advanced. So what we have, the people born in the 90s, we have the greatest intuition. No one is fucking with us. No one has seen us. Excuse my language. You have the advanced one, the next step up to where you see things as they truly are. You're going to intuit things that haven't even happened yet because that's what it truly is outside of time, not what's happening. Right. So where um, personally, your son in between that and Uranus gives you this supernatural genius level of claircognizance to take the mastery of everything you process and organize with your brain and automatically understand the knowledge of how it applies sociologically to the world around you in your sixth house relative to as a Virgo rising, how you creatively extend forth your social personality to unconventionally create this lifestyle. You're not meant to live a normal lifestyle. Sixth house is a house of work. It doesn't, you're not meant to work hard. You're meant to work smart. Like I make the money that I make just talking to people. I don't have to clock into a boss and trade my hours doing something I don't like because I'm not a dumbass. I work smart. I don't believe in working hard for hours to get crumbs. I work for a few hours and I make more money than most people who have full time jobs. We work smart and you take that to the next level. It's something you want to take your time with because you're in a world that kind of rejects the uniqueness you have, but still wants to copy it in every way. So it's common for Aquarians to just start trends and then be seen as weird, but then people copy it. But it's something to keep in mind because this Aquarius energy you have is some of the most extraordinary I've seen. It links your heart with this. So the way you love is eccentric. It's unique. It's also 
genius as well as it may be detached because you tap into the higher reality of love, which isn't necessarily attached, but in a way that enables you to enjoy the process of connecting with others. Your love is in a form of friendship, but in a way that you can connect with anybody of any station or status. So that's all I can really say about that because it's too advanced for me. Um, you're going to you're gonna be more aware of this dynamic, but I just want to let you know a lot of this shit is not in your head. You're, you're a cosmic god, bro. So with that, or at least at the God level. So Mars and Aries, I have Mars and Aries eight degrees. Um, as a Gemini, it's different as an Aquarius. As a Gemini, before I can think about how dumb or reckless what I, I already did it. And it's really awesome. I've cut a line with this. Like I, I had to go to a FAFSA line and it really, if I was going to be in a line, it'd be there for three hours. It hung around the back and instinctually, before I can think, the Mars and Aries is like, I'm not waiting in line. I didn't know how it was going to get to the front. I walked to the very front of the line without thinking. I didn't hesitate. I saw two lovebirds making out. I was like, hey, um, I just need a hand in this paper real quick. It won't be quick. They were making out. They're like, yeah, that's cool. And that's how I cut the line entirely. Okay. And it's cool until it gets me in trouble because sometimes I'll do stuff that's not the smartest, but I don't think about it because it's so instinctual. You have Aquarius. So you already have an awareness of knowledge of what to do before you do it, which is so cool because you have both the instinctual let's move, but you have the advanced awareness to know what you're doing instead of just take reckless actions like a dumbass, like I sometimes do. And this is why I respect the difference because in the seventh house, this is going to flank trining the extreme awareness, <coughs> trining the, ex <coughs> the extreme attitude that helps you visualize the higher nature of the karma of your words and gives you foresight about how extremely powerfully you can move in a direction, which will be a lot for some people, especially if they're inauthentic pieces of crap. But if they're authentic, it's going to really rev them extremely. This could also be bad if you're angry at someone because you'll, you'll put the blicking in their face. This really speaks to your love for adrenaline, but you want to be mindful of that because this isn't Mars and Capricorn like David Goggins has, who will just keep running in the desert even though his body is giving in on him because he's a fucking monster and just the overall god himself. This is Mars and Aries, which is a lot more instinctual and will have you take short bursts moving forward. Mars and Aries is just as powerful as Mars and Capricorn, if not more powerful. It's just Mars and Capricorn lasts so much longer. It knows how to organize the strength and, and go more for the long term, whereas Aries is super powerful in short bursts, but doesn't sustain that. But with your Aqua Sun, it can. The last thing I want to talk about is your moon in Scorpio. It's the purest part of you. And in its connection to all of this, Aquarius, it can clash between how intense you are on the inside but how detached you are expressed okay i also have jupiter in cancer the last time jupiter was in cancer was in 1990 when we were born and so it's a very exalted rich placement that enables you to expand how much more you tap in in the 11th of who your friends are and the career success you come into it also is the juice baby so you feel the juice and your soul connects that juice you feel the power of your feelings with the strength and quality of how you purify those feelings. So it's very powerful. The square Jupiter will make to Mars, which we both have. Be careful about doing too much, because unlike you, who I have Chiron in Cancer, you have Chiron in Capricorn. So this kind of balances more the healing of the integrity and the physiological actions you make towards making sure you don't doubt your actions, okay? But whenever you do, it'll bring inner pain because of your inability to just accept the direction you want to go into which is more deeply nuanced than that but the best way i can speak to that moon in scorpio is the pure element of your soul that will understand the wisdom of the knowledge you're aware of and so this is the vibration of the wisdom of knowledge or pure knowledge and this is what's going to help you understand the social undercurrent of the psychological nature of the way people connect their energies and shared feelings and it's also going to make you very pure inside and it's going to be the nuclear pure energy with which to make you super strong, but can, of course, still clash with how sometimes you'll feel like you need to get to the bottom of the situation versus your son in Aquarius. So it'll just be like, let it go, let it go. Regardless, this makes you super strong. B.O.B. is a version of this, except he's Scorpio Sun, Aqua Moon. He's one of the coolest artists ever. OK, like he's fucking dope. So I would listen to his music if you have it. You stay blessed as always. And until next time.